if you were in one of our past meetings, I, I announced ahead of time that I would be talking about loneliness tonight. And when one person heard that I would be discussing loneliness, uh, they wrote me a message. And in that message, they said, don't you dare minimize the effects of loneliness. And then they proceeded to send me 10 news articles linking loneliness and social isolation to suicide and death and mental illness. And so it is indeed quite a serious thing. Uh, but that's why I am talking about loneliness, because I do take it so seriously, you, you see. But uh, what happens with the public perception of loneliness, because they don't have a solution, all they can talk about is the problems that are associated with loneliness. So if there was an infectious disease that broke out uh, during the, the initial outbreak, uh, in the news cycle, generally, the populace would be talking about the deadly effects of this new infectious disease that has broken out. Um, however, once a antidote or a cure is created, then the emphasis would be on getting everyone that cure or that antidote to the deadly disease. The emphasis would no longer uh, properly be on the effects of the disease because now we have a cure or an antidote. So please understand when it comes to loneliness, I have an antidote to share with you. Yes, I have the antidote to loneliness. So that's why my emphasis will not be on all of the negative effects of loneliness. It will be on the cure or the antidote to loneliness. How do we fix it? How do we get out of it? Because most people don't know how to cope with loneliness, how to deal with it, how to get out of the feeling of loneliness, they self-medicate, they self-distract. Uh, so you find they find themselves on social media, scrolling, 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 trying to deal with their sense of loneliness. Uh, they're, they're feeling a sense of withdrawal from other social interactions. Uh, because they start to have so much anxiety over uh, loneliness. Um, they turn to substance abuse, alcohol, drugs, other substances. In fact, all addictions are really our desire to fill the hole of a lack of connection, uh, which is due to us being traumatized and feeling that codependency, that need for something else or someone else to fill that hole for us. And so that's really where substance abuse comes from. But what's worse is we may turn to unhealthy relationships or back to our original abusers. And so many of us have CPTSD or are traumatized because of abusive people in our life. So because of loneliness, we may be driven to go back to the, those people because we don't know how to cope with the feelings of loneliness. Uh, people who don't know how to cope or what the antidote to loneliness is uh, find themselves emotionally eating, compulsively shopping, using distractive behaviors, getting into video games, watching TV, just avoiding to face the loneliness. We find people uh, using escapism through books, movies, online platforms, some people turn to compulsive dating. Some people become sexaholics. Some people become workaholics. And all of this is because what? They're trying to find a way to cope with the feelings of loneliness. And then on top of that, around the time of the holidays, there's a perception that you should have a whole bunch of people around you during the holidays sitting at your kitchen table or you're supposed to be at someone else's dining room table and there needs to be a minimum of eight people around that table, right? And if you don't have a minimum of eight people at that table, then that means that you have to feel bad. You should feel lonely, right? And so we have these perceptions that are coming at us through the media that have been reinforced in the way that we were raised in the culture that we were raised in and the religion that we were raised in. And so we have all of these forces that are contributing to our loneliness. But how do we cure this? What is the antidote to loneliness? 
Well, first of all, in order to understand the cure, when they create a vaccination, they have to study the illness itself. And so for you to have the antidote to loneliness, you have to know what loneliness actually is. The reason people are self-destructing and self-medicating is because they don't even understand what it is. They just know they're feeling a negative sensation inside their body. And so they link that negative sensation to what they're perceiving, and they may perceive that there's a lack of people around. So many people believe that loneliness is the same as being alone, but that is not correct. Loneliness is not the same as being alone. If you think about it, sometimes while you're by yourself, you don't necessarily feel lonely. For instance, if you need to do some personal grooming or you're using the bathroom, doing something very private, and very personal, you don't feel lonely at those moments. You feel happy actually to have some, some privacy. So, so loneliness is not synonymous with being alone. What's more is that sometimes when you are with people that you're not connecting well with, you still feel lonely. You can be out with a whole group of friends and feel like I just don't connect or they're all feeling one way, but I don't feel the same way. Or they're all talking about something that I'm not interested in. And as a result, you're still feeling lonely. So loneliness is not being alone and it's not cured by being around people. Anyone who's in a marriage can attest their loneliness is not cured by the marriage itself. In fact, if your marriage is abusive or dysfunctional in any way, you can actually have increased loneliness while you're married to an abusive or neglectful spouse than you would feel if you were single. And that's ironic because one of the main reasons people get married is to avoid that feeling of loneliness. And then they get into the relationship and they say, oh no, this is even worse because now I'm specifically being abandoned by someone. Now that I'm in this relationship and someone is not taking care of my needs, I actually am feeling personally pained and hurt and rejected on a deeper level than if I were just by myself. And so the loneliness can actually be made worse by your attempts to solve the loneliness because you can become addicted to the drugs or the work or the sex or whatever it was that you were using to cope with the loneliness because you didn't understand what the loneliness was. You thought it was a lack of this or a lack of that. And in reality, loneliness is not the lack of people in your life. Loneliness is a perception of the mind. So if you're writing down the definition of loneliness, the workable definition is that loneliness is an unpleasant emotion due to discontentment with your current status, uh, particularly when it comes to relationship status. So loneliness is an unpleasant emotion due to discontentment with your relationship status. It is the sensation that there is something wrong with how you currently are. That's what loneliness is. It is a sensation that there's something wrong with your current state. So if you're in your house alone and you suddenly get a pang of loneliness, you go, oh no, I have a pang of loneliness right now. And you look around and your subconscious mind makes a determination, a perception of your current state and says, you know why you feel this way? Because there's no people around and that's bad. It's the feeling specifically that it's bad. There's something wrong with your current state. And so if you're with a group of friends, but you don't like what they're talking about, or you don't like the things they like, or they don't seem to relate to you, or they're not feeling you in some way, then you can still feel lonely because you're saying there's something bad about this right now, about me sitting here, not completely vibing with these people. And therefore I feel alone at this bar, in this restaurant, at this club, at this dinner table. I still feel alone. I still feel lonely. So loneliness is that emotional state, the emotional sensation of there being something bad about your current state. Those unpleasant emotions that you get are very real. It's chemicals in your system, actual chemicals dropping in your system 
cortisol punishing you. Oh, I feel so punished. I have to, I have to solve this. And you become desperate to solve this problem, but just pause for a moment and understand what is causing the chemical imbalance? What is causing your system to get flooded with cortisol? It's not not having people there because some people have people and they still feel lonely. They could live at home with their mom and dad and they go, well, I'm so lonely, but you live with your mom, your dad, and your brother and your sister all live in the same house. Why do you feel lonely? Well, I don't know because I don't have any friends, right? And you can have some people who are married, but they still feel lonely. Well, you have a husband or you have a wife. Why are you lonely? I don't know. I just feel lonely because that person doesn't like me or it's not enough or I've always wanted kids. You have a person who has two, three children at home. And, and what do they say? I feel lonely. Why do you feel lonely? You have two or three kids. No, but that's not enough. This is not, they don't count. You know, they're not even adults. This, is, this doesn't count. And you can have a person with, no family around, but they have their own group of friends. And they say, oh, I'm so lonely. You say, well, why are you lonely? You have a, a group of friends. That, well, I would love to have a group of friends like yours. They say, yeah, but I don't have any family. When my friends go on the holidays or whatever, they go and they visit their family. I don't have family. And then you can have someone with a family, but they don't have any friends. They say, I'm so lonely. And you say, why are you lonely? You have the best family in the world. They say, yeah, but I don't have a good group of friends to be with. I only see these, these, this family once a year on the holidays. And then you have the person who doesn't have any family and they don't have any friends. And they say, I'm lonely. But did you notice that not just he, who didn't seem to have any people in his life, but all of the subsequent examples or the preceding examples, all of them felt lonely? What was the commonality? Why did they all feel lonely if they actually did have people of some sort around them? Because they were discontent with what they had. They were discontent with what they had. That's why they felt lonely with that situation. They were discontent. It wasn't enough. That's what they're saying. They're saying, this is not enough. What I have here is not enough for me. And that's why I feel lonely. So their focus of their mind was on something else being the answer. In other words, they were viewing what they had as not being enough. So is it wrong for us to desire to have more? Well, absolutely not. But we do have to fix our perception so that our thinking is balanced. Because on one extreme, we can think that the answer is to have more people. And so we, we're desperate and we're in desperation for more people and to be around people, which can cause us to people please and fear rejection and fear conflict. And on the other hand, we can be at the other extreme where we're saying, well, forget it. I don't want to be around anyone. I can't trust anyone. And then we're purposely socially, socially isolating ourselves. And now we don't have the ability to trust. We don't have the ability to set boundaries. We don't have good good relationship skills. And so these are two extreme thoughts, two extreme ways of governing your life. We have to get out of the extremes and get to the solution. So what is the antidote to loneliness? Well, contentment. Since loneliness is a perception of the mind in which you are discontent with your situation, the antidote to your loneliness is to develop the skills of contentment, to be content with your current situation, to be content with your current situation. You see, as I mentioned, the chemicals that you're feeling in the system are very real and very punishing, but they are being produced by the subconscious mind and the subconscious mind is operating on perceptions. So what are the perceptions that you are harnessing around your state whether it's you're just a single person with no family, no friends, or if you're a person with a marriage mate or you're a person with just kids and no marriage mate or a person with parents and you're a person with this, whatever you have, you're still experiencing loneliness because every human has experienced loneliness at some point. And if we have other mental illnesses, then we will also experience loneliness probably in a greater degree. 
But please understand loneliness is a symptom of mental illness. Being alone does not cause the mental illness. What does cause the mental illness is unhealthy attachment to others. So analyze in your mind, what is causing, what is driving this perception that there's something wrong with your current state so that you can switch that perception? For instance, in your case, are you someone who does social comparison or you're comparing yourself to another person who appears to have more than you? This is big around the holidays because a person is looking into other people's lives by means of the television and by means of social media. And they go, look at all those people that that person has in their life, forgetting that 80% of that is fake, right? They go, look at all those people. That's what I want to have. And now they're comparing themselves to another person, putting someone else here and then saying, oh, I'm, I'm only here. I don't have enough. You ever hear the saying, comparison is the thief of joy? We cannot be happy and comparing ourselves to everyone else at the same time. If we have more than them by our perception, then we're just being narcissistic. And if we have less than them by our perception, then we're just being the unhealed toxic empath. Woe is me, victim mentality, learned helplessness. So what should we be doing? Healthy mindset is I never compare myself to others. Things are not always as they appear. That's healthy thinking. Just because you see people with other people doesn't mean it's great. Doesn't mean the relationship is beautiful. It doesn't mean no one's being abused. The reality is sometimes things are not what they appear to be. So we should not be jealous. We should not be comparing ourselves to others. Are you someone who suffers from negative self-talk? Because that could be what's driving the perception of loneliness. Negative self-talk is internalizing negative thoughts and speaking to yourself in a negative way about your worthlessness or your lack of connection and anticipating the rejection that fosters this feeling of loneliness around your current situation. So what should you do if you notice that you do have negative self-talk? Oh, I don't have anyone because I'm worthless. I don't have anyone because I'm not lovable. I, I'm not good enough. And you're saying these things to yourself. You have to recognize that negative self-talk is abuse of a human being. You are a human being. And so if you're speaking negatively to yourself, then you're abusing a human being and you must stop immediately. So how do we switch that perception around? We should tolerate no negative self-talk. No negative self-talk. Of course, we, we leave room for a, a 10 to 15% constructive criticism of the self, but no negative self-talk. So we need to switch to 85% positive self-talk. 85% of what goes on in your brain and what comes out of your mouth needs to be positive. I am worthy. I am lovable. I am capable. I am beautiful. I am desirable. I can do it. I will have it. That will help us to get what we may desire. Positive self-talk. Believing that you are worthy of love statistically makes it more likely that you will find love. That's a fact. Perhaps you have fear of rejection and maybe that's what's driving your negative perceptions around your situation so that you feel lonely about it. If you have fear of rejection, then you're worried about being rejected by other people not fitting in. And so that creates a barrier to social interactions because you don't even want to approach the social interactions when you have that fear of rejection. And if you do, it's hard to approach them authentically. So what do you do if you notice you may have some fear of rejection? Switch the mindset entirely. Learn to be someone who embraces rejection. Embraces rejection? Yes. Rejection is a healthy part of life that allows us to trim off 
the facts, specifically the narcissists, the abusers, all the people you don't want in your life and the people you don't have things in common with, they need to be trimmed off. And so there needs to be a rejection one way or another. Either you need to allow them to reject you because you are showing up as so authentic, so yourself that they don't even want to be around you anymore. Or you need to reject them and say, thank you so much for being in my life, but you have served your purpose here and I need to move on and let them go. Let them go. Rejection, rejection is a healthy part of life in order to get that family around you, that tribe around you that you crave, then you need to embrace rejection. It is a vetting process to get the good, healthy people around you. And so you have to go mm -mm, next, mm -mm, next, like you're reviewing resumes, like you are interviewing for a position before you just allow someone into your life. So to build your tribe, you must embrace rejection. What if you're having the overemphasis on being alone? So you're viewing the time spent as being negative. You're, you're feeling like a solitude isn't something that of value. Being alone isn't something of value. I'm always alone. So you're overemphasizing this feeling, this, this time, this perception of being alone. What do we need to do? We need to switch our mindset to embracing the empowering aspects and the opportunities that our temporary solitude affords us. We need to embrace the empowering aspects and the opportunities that our temporary solitude affords us. And we'll talk more about that. Uh, but some people have the perception of exclusion. So they feel like they are left out of social events and gatherings. And so therefore it's intensifying that perception of loneliness, which is viewing it as being wrong that you are here by yourself. You say, I feel excluded. No one invited me to a dinner or a holiday event. And therefore I'm, I'm, an, I'm an outcast. I'm excluded. You see the, the detrimental thinking here? How do we turn this around? We need to embrace that we cannot read people's intentions. We cannot read people's intentions. So that means if someone didn't invite us to something, don't conclude that you know they didn't invite you because they wanted to exclude you. Don't conclude that it was personal at all. There's no reason to, and it's not helpful. It's detrimental to, to conclude that, oh, I'm rejected because, or, or, or I'm excluded uh, on purpose because this person hasn't invited me or no one has invited me. It may not be that deep. Mind reading is cognitive distortion. So we need to cut that out and embrace that we don't know people's intentions, get refocused on our personal power and our purpose. Sometimes we're feeling that loneliness because we have the distortion of unrealistic expectations. So if we have unrealistic expectations to the depth of what the relationship is supposed to be or the frequency of the social interactions, then when it's not as frequent as we want or it's not as deep as we want, then we go, oh, I'm still lonely despite having these friends because we set up ourselves for expectation and expectation is the door that leads to disappointment. And we walked right through it. We cut the door ourselves. So, so, so what do we need to do if we have unrealistic expectations? We should all, we should all endeavor to embrace a life free of expectation. Why would you expect? You can't predict the future. You don't know what's going to happen, what you're going to get, what's going to come. So what are you expecting? Don't expect anything. You'll just be surprised and disappointed if you expect things. At best, something meets your expectation and then you feel, uh, <laughs> oh, good. I mean, that was what I expected. You just feel blasé. It doesn't help you emotionally to have expectations. So let go of expectations. I can't predict the future. That's cognitive reality. I can't predict the future. That's balanced thinking. So I don't know what's going to happen. So I'll see. And by having no expectations, guess what? Almost everything exceeds your expectations. And that's a good feeling to have. 
wouldn't you like to live a life where almost everything exceeds your expectations? Oh, wow. This is such an amazing water bowl. Wow. Everything is good. Because you, you live your life without expectation. Now, if you're the type of person who has the distortion of catastrophizing, this is imagining the worst case in social situations that can lead you to more social rejection and isolation. Recognize catastrophizing is cognitive distortion. And so what we need to do is embrace, I can't predict the future. I don't know what's going to happen and remove the expectation. If you're the type of person who's experiencing more loneliness because of a lack of self-compassion, recognize that being overly critical to oneself and not being compassionate to oneself is abuse and neglect of a human being. Lack of self-love is lack of love. Lack of self-love is lack of love. Lack of love, that's lack of spirituality, lack of godliness. This is not something you want to embrace as a part of you. Inconvenient as it may be, you are a human being. So care for that person. Care for that inner child. That's your one responsibility in this universe. Don't shirk the one responsibility, the one thing that everyone is trusting you to do, which is to care for the self, advocate for the self, have compassion for the self, the child. That's your job, not the rest of ours. If you're the type of person who's experiencing increased loneliness because you're ruminating over past social situations, that time that you got embarrassed or that time in fifth grade where you got uh, uh, rejected from something, that, then we got to get out of the past, right? Dwelling on past social failures, negative experiences can create a mindset that inhibits our ability to be present and to have connection. You're increasing your own loneliness and decreasing your potential of building your tribe by focusing on your past negative experiences. That's perseveration. It's rumination. And it can bring us to our ruination. So let's switch that around. Instead of ruminating on past social experiences, let's come, let's let's bring it back to my past does not define me. That's cognitive reality. Nice balanced cognitive thought. I am not defined by what happened to me. That's positive cognitive balance. You are not defined by what happened to you in your past. One thing trauma survivors struggle with sometimes is a belief in permanence. So Anything that's temper that's uh that's good or bad, especially the bad, they look at it as if it's going to be permanent. So if you are by yourself right now and you don't prefer to be, if you are single right now and you don't prefer to be, that's not wrong. But it is wrong to look at your current situation as if this is your life sentence. This is not it. This is not all you will ever have. This is not all you can achieve for the rest of your life. If you needed to get out of some abusive relationships, some some, if you've needed to disconnect from some toxic uh, connections, parents, friends, family that just weren't good for you, that weren't going to aid you in your healing and your growth, then you did the right thing to make those disconnections. But it may temporarily lead to a lack it may temporarily have you with not as many people around you just by the numbers. But do not view it as permanent. It is temporary. One of the first things you must do to reframe the feeling that's leading to loneliness is remind yourself, this is temporary. And it's by choice. It's not exactly what I would have wanted. But as comparison to what I had, this is by choice and it's temporary. You will eventually get married if you're not married or get married again if you uh, had to get divorced. 
you will find mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters, people who are like-minded and of like faith and spirit to you. If you've had to cut off those that were going to be a detriment, a detriment to you, you can rebuild your tribe. So this is temporary. Taking the 300 to 600, even 800 days and not having a ton of people around you, it can be to your benefit. Uh, last of all, we have to stop with the social media comparison. Friends, unfollow. Unfollow. We don't need to know what's happening with the person we went to high school with and our neighbor down the street and the lady from church. We don't need to know their business, especially not the fake false business that they put up on social media. They cry every day and then they get one good moment, a good meal, and then they put that in your face on social media. And then you're looking, oh, they look at them. They go to all these great restaurants. This is fake. And most of all, even if it's real, even if everything's going great for them, it has nothing to do with us. So why are we watching it on a daily basis in social media? Just catch up with them once every five to 10 years. Why do we need this on a daily? I don't, we don't need that. Unfollow, unfollow. Follow people on social media that are going to be to your benefit. Follow the therapists and the psychologists and the trauma survivors. Follow the people that are going to build you up, not the people that are going to make you feel less than. Don't do social media comparison. Now, as we talk about these ways of switching the mindset, you may already start to feel a psychological shift in in your own perception of loneliness but there can be some resistance for many because they feel like well i don't want to start to view being alone as a good thing i don't want to be content about being alone because then i'll be stuck here forever well there's the permanence right remember this is temporary there is no you're stuck here forever first of all second of all Learning to be content is not going to get you stuck as a single person or as a person in your current situation. Learning to be content is going to increase your attractiveness. And it's going to increase the chances that you will be able to attract more people to your future tribe that you are building. So don't, don't avoid uh, trying to build the skills of contentment. Contentment is the antidote, the antidote to this disease of loneliness, which as we, we mentioned, is deadly. So we have to switch the mindset so that we can, so that we can live and eventually thrive. So yes, you do want to be comfortable being alone. That's what gives you the base, the foundation, the strength to reject toxic people, to walk away from relationships because you know that you can go back to your foundation of being content alone. That's a skill that you need. It helps you to reject people in relationships. We're talking friendships and romantic relationships. If you are content being alone, then when you make connections, it is an icing on the cake. It is adding another source of joy, but it's not your only source of joy, which helps you to not get so caught up in it so that you become mentally ill and codependent. And then they have too much power over you. And then they harm you in a very real way due to their imperfection, their unhealed trauma, or just pure evil on some of their parts. It is a protection for you to learn that at the base, you can always go back to your default position, which is the, the autonomous creature. With your privacy, with your personal freedom, and your full autonomy as an individual. A person who becomes content with their current condition or relationship status is more likely to get what they want in life. For one, being content with your current situation will allow you some time for some self-discovery. Discovering yourself 
allows you to get to know your feelings, allows you to get to know your thoughts better. So then you can represent them. When we talk about going and setting boundaries, you can't do that if you don't even know what you feel. And you can't know what you feel if you never spent any time alone. So understand that if you are temporarily alone, there is a benefit to it. And part of that benefit is the self-discovery. You can build up a greater sense of independence so that you can uh, build up your skills of seeing yourself as equal to others, equal to other people, so that you're no longer going to them for validation. What do you think of me? What do you want me? Does anyone want me? I need validation. I need someone to tell me that I am worthy. No, what you need is to learn to validate yourself. What you need is to learn to validate yourself. And you can't do that. If you're spending every waking moment chasing the validation of someone else. Take some time. If you happen to already be by yourself or without as many people around you as you would prefer, take some time. Learn to validate yourself. Build up some independence. You can get your equilibrium, your emotional well-being balanced when you don't have a bunch of people around you dysregulating you. You see, when there's other people in the room, it's very easy to slip back into our old habit of prioritizing their emotions and feelings. So instead of prioritizing other people's emotions and feelings, if you find yourself without as many people around you as you would like, instead of going into loneliness, oh, this is bad, go into equilibrium, which is healed, balance. When you have a good base, a good equilibrium of emotional well-being, now you'll know when to set boundaries in the future because you'll know when your emotions are disturbed off of their equilibrium. And you'll speak up and that's and you say, yeah, no, I don't like that. Please don't say that to me. You will become assertive, well-balanced, boundaried as a person. Why? Because you took the time while you were by yourself to establish an emotional equilibrium of true peace and serenity. And now that serenity is your default, you will always know how to keep yourself there rather than chasing it because you constantly traded it in and gave it up in your relationships. We get reduced pressure when we're not in a relationship. We get increased personal growth when we're not in a relationship. We can increase our flexibility, our adaptability. We can become more authentic. We can have enhanced communication skills. We can lessen our fear of loss. We can increase our, our resilience. So what should we do on a practical level now? For many of us, this is a triggering time going into the holidays. So if you feel a pang of distress, that is loneliness, what do you do? Use the JOT method as a lasting solution. Well, you may have to use it multiple times every time you feel the pang of distress but you can use the JAT method. The way that plays out would look like this. And by the way, you can find the, the instructions for the JAT method on YouTube, Roman Zanoni J-O-T method. So you'll ask yourself with your pen and paper in hand, hey, what am I feeling right now? Oh, I feel lonely because I don't have any wife and kids. I'm already 42. And then that was the stop. Then you'll drop. Oh, well, why does that bother me so much? Well, because I'm getting older. Well, why does that bother me so much? Well, because I should have a wife and kids by now at this age. And then, ooh, I, ju I just identified a cognitive distortion, should statements. And so I stop there and I go, okay, now I need to go and, and do a role play on this cognitive distortion. And so you work out the role play and you have that conversation with yourself as a child talking to a father, expressing that cognitive distortion. As, a, as a, a child talking to the father, dad, I feel like by this age, I should already have these things. And then what would the father then say back to the child? Then the father says, son or daughter, 
what you're saying, there are no rules for life that you should have something by a certain time. Don't forget that, that once you're married, you're going to need to be able to be grateful for what you have at that time. But right now, you need to be grateful for what you have now. And right now, you have an opportunity to grow. So please understand, there is no should state. There is no, no, no rule that says you should be able to have this by this time or you should be able to have that. In fact, you should be grateful because you actually got out of a relationship with an abusive person. And you're all very attractive, man. And you're very smart and you have things to offer. And if you keep doing what you're doing, eventually a woman is going to be uh, mutually attracted to you. But for now, give yourself time to breathe and focus on your purpose. And then as you do that, all of a sudden you will notice what? A shift in your perception and in the chemicals. And when those chemicals shift, the feeling shifts. And you will no longer be in loneliness. The job method works. Use it. As a shorthand, what you can do is two lists. When you feel a pain of loneliness and you don't have time to sit down and do the job method, even though it only takes five to 10 minutes, we got a shorthand method that you can use. Uh, it's not as powerful as the job method, but it can help get you a quick uh, re-up to your equilibrium. And that's to make a list, three things on each side. On one side, you're going to make a list of uh, why, why it is okay or actually good for you to be in your current situation. So why is it actually good or okay for you to be in your current situation? List down on the piece of paper three reasons why. And then on the other side, list three reasons why it would be bad for you to have what you actually are wanting too soon. So first list is why is it okay for you to temporarily be in this situation? Three, three reasons. And the second list is three reasons why it would be bad for you to have what you're wanting too soon. As a result of doing that list, it will help your subconscious mind to recalibrate and rebalance, and you will notice the loneliness subsiding. Now, look, tell me something. Why is it that doing exercises on a piece of paper is able to help your loneliness to disappear? Here's the answer, because your loneliness isn't about how many people you have around you. Your loneliness is about your mental perception. So practice these skills of contentment. Why? Because they will help you. Not just to feel better now, but to get what you're wanting in the future, which is increased connection and to build your tribe.